When Epcot opened in 1982, it was full of these grand e-ticket attractions that entertained and inspired, and the rides often touched on cutting-edge science and technology, and thus were intentionally designed to not be relevant for more than 10 to 15 years, with the expectation that corporate sponsors would pay for regular updates. The problem is, paying for theme park rides just so you can slap your logo on them is not as effective a marketing strategy as one might think, so things often weren't updated when they were supposed to. Journey into Imagination was the last original ride to not be updated and with the Millennium Celebration coming up, it seemed like the perfect time to do it. There wasn't enough money for updates in Disney's budget since the theme parks were struggling financially after the failures of Euro Disneyland. Kodak was a sponsor of the pavilion, but at the time, digital cameras were starting to hit the market and camera phones were on the horizon, so Kodak wasn't exactly in a great financial spot either. But Disney gave Kodak an ultimatum that if they wanted to keep the working relationship with Disney, Kodak had to pay for the update to Imagination. Most sponsors would look at that ultimatum, laugh, and then walk away. But Kodak wasn't just a sponsor, they were also the official camera for the Walt Disney World Resort, which was a huge moneymaker for Kodak. I mean, can you even imagine going on a Disney vacation without your trusty disposable camera? So Kodak worked out a deal to pay for the update but at a very reduced budget and with a request that Disney make the new ride more cool and hip. The problem here is that Disney didn't know how to be hip. Oftentimes, the attempts to be more relevant in the theme parks boiled down to just a celebrity cameo and a more cynical tone. So we're left with a long overdue update rushed for a special event done on an extremely tight budget and catering to corporate mandates to be more trendy. And if that's not a recipe for success, I don't know what is. The new version of the ride, Journey Into Your Imagination, opened in 1999 and starred famed comedian Eric Idle reprising his role of Dr. Nigel Channing from the Honey I Shrunk the Audience 3D movie. The ride begins with guests going through scanners that show they have a complete lack of creative thought. Dr. Channing takes them on a tour through the Imagination Institute filled with optical illusions to try and stimulate their creativity before one last trip through the scanners to see that now they are overflowing with imagination. Imagination is represented here by a guitar with the head of a human child. The redo was bland and boring, and it didn't just lack the charm of the original, it tore it out and actively replaced it with crap. Beloved characters like Dreamfinder and Figment? Who needs them? Come from the ride entirely outside of a small cameo. An inspirational and whimsical tone? Overrated! Let's insult guests to their faces! As you can see, there's not much going on upstairs! Fully realized sets and environments? Fuck. Get that action! The cool thing to do is to just get a dark warehouse full of blank walls and fill it with tiny random bits of stuff that don't connect to each other in any cohesive or stylistic way. The groundbreaking turntable scene? Not enough money to fix that. Let's rip it out along with a large chunk of the track so the new ride is literally half as long as the original. Fans hated this new version of the ride. Kodak hated this new version of the ride. Even Michael Eisner hated this new version of the ride. They kept it open for the Millennium Celebration and then quickly closed it in 2000. One. Hope you all are enjoying Figment February, I've got weekly videos all month long on the Imagination Pavilion. Subscribe so you don't miss the story behind the current version of the ride and a look towards the future next week.